Still testing. Rocket Lab has had to postpone the test flight of their second electron vehicle yet again to Tuesday afternoon after weather conditions and orbital traffic proved less than ideal on Monday. The electron rocket, known as Still Testing, is currently at a launch site in New Zealand. It's 17 meters long and can carry a 150 kilogram payload into orbit. The rocket will be launched into space from the Mahaya Peninsula, with the first stage scheduled to separate and fall into the Pacific two and a half minutes into the flight. Three shoebox-sized satellites will then be released at 8 minutes 31 seconds. The single Dove Pioneer CubeSat is an Earth imaging satellite, while the two Lemur 2 satellites are used for weather mapping and ship traffic tracking. Rocket Lab successfully launched its first electron rocket in May of 2017, though it failed to reach orbit. The company originally planned three test flights and will run a third test launch if needed. Three, two, one, blast off. SpaceX rocket really blows. Face boom! Sorry, Facebook head honcho Mark Zuckerberg must be pissed with his SpaceX counterpart Elon Musk today after a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket carrying a satellite that FB was planning to use exploded on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. The blast occurred as the rocket was being fueled on Thursday, but the cause of the explosion was not immediately known. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket is designed to transport satellites and spacecraft into space. It has nine first-stage engines, which can sustain two engine shutdowns during flight without compromising the mission. The second stage delivers the payload into orbit. Its single engine can be reignited several times to send multiple payloads into space. The first stage of the rocket is designed to return to Earth so it can be reused. Rocket burns decelerate the Falcon 9 before four landing legs deploy. The Falcon 9 that exploded on Thursday was carrying an Amos 6 satellite, which Facebook planned to use to boost internet connectivity in Africa. The 62 million US dollar Falcon 9 rocket was due to launch on Saturday. Mark Zuckerberg wrote on Facebook that he was deeply disappointed by the mission's failure. And Elon Musk aside, he definitely won't be the only one. Facebook is a customer of Israeli company Spacecom, which owns the Amos 6 satellite. It remains to be seen if the blast will scupper Spacecom's 285 million sale to a Chinese company, which was announced last week. Conditions attached to the deal said the satellite had to be launched successfully and complete in-orbit tests. Whoops. World's largest aircraft, the Strato launch, nears completion. Seattle-based company Vulcan Aerospace announced that its Strato Launch Systems, an air launch platform for rockets, is close to completion. The Strato Launch has a wingspan of 385 feet and measures 238 feet in length. The six-engine aircraft is currently the world's largest. The Strato Launch is designed to carry rockets weighing up to 275 tons. It would take off from a runway with the rocket attached to its belly and release the rocket when it reaches 35,000 feet. The rocket then fires its own engine and travels towards its orbit. Strato Launch is designed to make air rocket launches into low Earth orbit a routine commute. The Strato Launch systems are expected to be completed by the end of this year and is estimated to start commercial services before 2020. SpaceX rocket sending first inflatable habitat to space. It sounds like a sci-fi dream, but the International Space Station crew is getting their first attachable, expandable room when an unmanned SpaceX spacecraft takes off on Friday. When SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket launches from Florida on April 8th, it'll be sending the Dragon cargo capsule to the International Space Station with 7,000 pounds of supplies. A prototype expandable space habitat called the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM, will be included in the cargo. Air stored inside the BEAM will inflate the habitat to up to 13 feet long and a diameter of 10 feet. The BEAM will be attached to one of the docking ports on the International Space Station for two years. Crew members won't be living in the prototype yet. Instead, they will be running tests on its structural durability, as well as its ability to withstand variations in pressure, temperature, and radiation. Made out of Kevlar-type material, the beam offers protection from outside space debris, such as small, asteroid-like objects. 
Inflatable habitats could be essential to future missions to deep space. On these long journeys, crew members will need more space to store supplies as well as conduct research. If the upcoming beam experiments prove successful, the prototype will lay the groundwork for future space habitats. Blue Origin's next test may involve destroying a rocket. Private space company Blue Origin will test launch its new Shepard rocket for the fifth time in October. The reusable rocket is designed to take paying passengers to the edge of space. Blue Origin's latest launch, to be held at the company's facility in West Texas near El Paso in October, will test its emergency escape system during flight. The new Shepard rocket consists of a rocket booster and six-passenger crew capsule, equipped with a rocket motor. On a normal flight, the capsule separates from the booster near the edge of space. Both the booster and the capsule then descend safely to Earth. During an emergency, the capsule's rocket motor will fire for two seconds, blasting it away, where it will undergo its standard descent pattern, possibly destroying the booster. Blue Origin has already tested the system on the ground, but has yet to test it during flight. When the New Shepard is at 16,000 feet, around 45 seconds after launch, the company will trigger the capsule's escape sequence. Let's cross our fingers we'll see the New Shepard again.